and welcome to another episode of Vision Quest. My name is Ashley Appap. Uh, if this is your first time here, hello. Welcome. I, if you don't know, am a writer and comedian from Melbourne, Australia, and this is my podcast. This is my room. Welcome. Uh, I, I would offer you a refreshment, but I cannot do that through technology. When, when I can figure that out, you will be the first person that I give a refreshment to, trust me. Um, and if you have been here before, welcome back. How are you? How's your week been? As always, can't hear you. Just like I can't get the refreshments through the camera, I, I cannot hear you if you're talking at me. But if you do want to message me on Instagram or anything and let me know how you are and just say I am good, I will know what you mean. Same with I am bad. In that case, I'm sorry. But I hope you're good. I'm very good because today I'm talking to one of my favorite people in the universe. Dare I? I was going to say the planet, but no, 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 no. It extends the universe. Everyone, Jaden Mashuli is here. God, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're oh. one of my favorite people in the universe. Stop it. <laughs> oh my God. Are we in love? I mean, we are. We are. Some have said, though some being Jaden and I, that our vibe is like incestuous siblings. That is, that's the only way to describe it, I think. Um, yeah. And hopefully in the next hour, <laughs> you'll, you'll learn why. <laughs> So Jaden and I have known each other for what, for four or five years? A, a while. Five years? Yeah, five, I think so. So we met um, doing improv together, but we weren't, we were like on track to never do a class together. And then we yeah. were very lucky. One, one fateful night mm -hmm. at the Melbourne Fringe. What a dream. Party. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, Mel it was Melbourne Fringe after party. And I think that was the, the, the first night we met. And then shortly after that, we were in a class together. But that night, I remember getting so drunk, I had to cancel work the next day and I <laughs> almost threw up in an Uber. Yeah, I remember it was pretty, pretty wild, but it felt very formative. I think I was um, thinking about us as people um, and I always have this weird, like, <laughs> I was like, why do me and Ash get along so well? And I think it's like, because we are, we have like the same upbringing and the same life just in like even though we're on we grew up on different sides of the city but essentially like we both have we're both the same age we mm -hmm. both have this like suburban upbringing from this like big italian family and so i think we just had like <laughs> the same upbringing so then when i think we met and it was just sort of like oh like we're on the same vibe immediately like we understand each other like yeah. so wholeheartedly and you just knew even though you were saying we were on track to never meet but obviously we must have known each other through some channel before that, it'll change that night when we actually yep. spoke to each other. <laughs> In a different life, we were probably just two Italian villagers. Exactly. <laughs> Here you are working on the docks. I don't know what the I don't know what the villagers did. <laughs> what an insult to our ancestors. I don't know what they did. Oh, Eating gelati, I don't <laughs> know. Good luck to them. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. And we're both like younger sibling yes um with an older sister that's correct we're both um have little nephews we do oh my god what what else what else we're both tall <laughs> both tall we both have a brown dark brown hair mm. <laughs> everything the same we have two feet um, two hands uh, yeah and we're both hot as fuck. yeah <laughs> yeah so, Jane, tell, tell everyone out there if, if they haven't had the honour of meeting you before, who are you? What's, what, what are you all about? Who am I? Um, well, I, uh, I love what you said in your first episode where you were like, F what what you do is what you get money for. Just say the thing <laughs> that you want to be and just be that. Um, so I guess I, <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a screenwriter. I'm a sketch comedian and an improviser. Those are all terms that are called carefully selected, <laughs> carefully and put in that order. I've thought about this. Um, but yes, I've got a screenwriting background. Um, I've worked on a couple of projects um in the past including the investigators which is a children's netflix show uh which is really fun um yes it is and then i've done a lot of sketch shows with my sketch group hit by a blimp um which is 
a dream and uh, I do a lot of improv teaching and performing with the Improv Conspiracy, which is where we met. Well, um, we fell so that, in is, love. that is me in a nutshell. And then trying to subsidize all that with various <laughs> uh, arts and customer service jobs. <laughs> yeah, classic. I would like to point out, you have been paid for all those things though. So it's, it's technically, yes, <laughs> it's yes. technically, yes. I, not, not saying that to be like, you're a lot, you're a f-ing liar. I'm saying that to be like, give yourself some credit. You are True. a professional you've, and I once, and I'm a professional too, just cause I haven't been paid. doesn't mean I'm not professional. You have been paid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <gasps> this is you're gonna get a lot of this it's gonna be lots of just like uh quiet yelling and us be like tr- try being very kind to each other and mean to ourselves yeah that's it that's, that's the it. only way we function <laughs> and as you can see jaden has got his little glass of water <laughs> but it's in a scotch glass and it the, the level of water that is in there is the amount that y- you would have of scotch in that glass not not scotch <laughs> No, it's water. <laughs> I just adore you. I just, I just, it just makes me, it just, we literally haven't talked about anything and I'm already like, my face hurts. <laughs> I know, truly, truly nothing, <laughs> which I love. Should we get into some, some questions? Let's do it. The first question is, what did you want to be when you grew up and why do you think that is? Um, well, this is where, um, you'll realize <laughs> me and Asher twins because <laughs> I too wanted to be a spy. When I was... <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, that was obviously very obsessed with the movie Spy Kids, um, very obsessed with, and then the follow-ups, uh, Spy Kids 2. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But also, <laughs> I meant to say companion film, Agent Cody Banks. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> Which my was... God. Literally Malcolm in the middle <laughs> as a spy. Which is Plus Hilary Duff. Duff. Yeah, of course, of course. And I was so obsessed with those movies um, as a kid and I was like, must be a spy. And I think um, why, and I mean, me, me and my sketch group <laughs> did a sketch show a few years ago and I did a whole monologue about this. So I have, I have thought about this in the past. Yes, and I would um, like to say I teched that show and it was the most fun experience of my life <laughs> thank you thank it was. you it, was it really great. was a very fun time um but i think like i i loved them i love spies because they were like so under the radar and i think i felt very when i was younger i felt very invisible and i felt very like i wanted to keep no one wanted to speak to me and I just like kept to myself a lot and people would forget my name and I would and it would always annoy me but I also probably put myself into that situation so I think like spies were like these were people that did not get any glory they were just very invisible but they like saved the world that was like their whole job and I think I like loved that so much <laughs> did you ever get the McDonald's toys when Spike, I think it was when Spike It's 2 came out, they had like this gadget line in the Happy Meals. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you remember what any of them were? It was definitely like a, uh, oh, maybe I'm confusing them with, because I definitely had like spy glasses that were, um, <laughs> that were glasses, but that, that had like a recording device on the side of them. So you could like hear from very far away. Now, I don't know whether that was a Macca's toy or whether that was just a, something, a toy that I owned. <laughs> Slowly, like, yeah. combined the two. There was, was bug, like, okay. <laughs> there was a little bug. Um, don't know what it did, but there was a little bug. Um, a little bug. What was that thing where, like, it was Scholastic and you had, there was, like, a catalogue? Yeah, the Scholastic Book Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there you was... got the, the novels? <laughs> All yeah. the novels? <laughs> yeah. There was... Yeah, I had the Spy Kids novelization. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but there was also some of them came with other spy gear stuff. Oh my god! Whoa, I did not have that. Okay, <laughs> there was one that was like an ink. Ki- it was like a. It was like um. I think I. Oh, I have the. Pe- I still have it right here. Okay, so it's a secret pen. Secret writer. Secret writer, Ooh. and I, you know what? If you're listening to this, I'm so sorry, but you're gonna miss seeing the magic of spyware. But if you are watching, this is your lucky day. Okay, so I'm gonna write a word. Oh, oh my God. Can you see anything? 
No. Oh, you can see an outline. Don't worry about that outline. Pretend you don't see it. <laughs> and now I'm going to use. I couldn't see it. And now I'm going to use this magic section. Oh and my god. And I'm gonna... oh, ho, ho. She still works. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. This is poo. Of course it does. Um, amazing. Amazing. That is that is spyware at its finest. Yeah. Just a just a texter. I definitely started a spy um, organization when I was in primary <gasps> school though. <laughs> and we were called I think we were called um, it was called DSS. And it, I can't remember what it stood for. Something Secret Spies. D- I don't know. Something starting with D, but I remember it was DSS. And I had like a whole like a folder of like case notes <laughs> of what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not too sure. And I like hid it around this alleyway in the side of my house. I like buried it. <laughs> and I remember me and my friend Danny, maybe he stood for the D, but where was my name? Anyway, we were like we were spies at our school and so we would like hunt down cases we didn't do anything because obviously what what is there to do or solve as a spy in a primary school in dandenong north maybe that's what the d stood for dandenong could be it's completely gone from my memory like i i just remember writing dss it could be dandenong secret spies that would probably make the most sense it's like both sad and nice the reason behind why you think it that's what you wanted to be like i guess so yeah but I feel the same way. I feel like even though I like had friends and I like my sister and I were very close and stuff, I was always like just doing weird shit on my own and just <laughs> absolutely, yeah. Same. Just being like no like, one oh, understands me. Yeah, totally. And I guess my sister was like five. It's like five years older than me, so it wasn't like we were in, you know, the same. Like we were, we were never at school together, and like so we were a different age. There was like a big bracket. So yeah. it was never like we were in competition or anything. So I did, you know, I was on my own in a, in a different way, I guess. Jaden, guess what? What? My sister's also five years older than me. <laughs> oh my God. Get out of <laughs> it, all, it goes right to the top. <laughs> my favorite spy, Jaden. Uh, sorry. My second favorite spy, apart from myself. Number three and four are, of course, Carmen and Junie. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number five is. Um, Machete. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's bad. It's, it is insane. I watched it earlier this year and it, I was like, this is crazy. Like this movie is scary, but also very sexy. <laughs> like Antonio Banderas and Carla Gugino are like so sexy. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what is this for kids? Who is this for? I don't understand. And like Tony Shalhoub is a villain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Alan Cumming is also a villain. It's just like, what is happening? And let's not forget about those thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, weird, haunting. My next question is, what's your favourite thing about yourself? I think I like how um, brave I have been slash am. I guess when I went and travelled a lot, like I went and travelled overseas by myself um, and sort of backpacked around and I sort of started doing, you know, started doing improv and doing comedy shows and solo shows and things like that. And I, you know, came out um, of the closet and sort of did all that. And I feel like there was no... Um, I don't know. There was no, like, there's nothing in my past to like suggest that I should have done that. (laughs) But, um, I feel like I've sort of overcome something in myself, uh, to make myself do that. And I still, you know, I'm always trying to, uh, you know, make sure I'm doing, you know, something that scares me or something that is out of my comfort zone. Um, and that's always been a big part of who I am. So I think I'm like, most happy and, and proud of that I would say that's that's very true you are brave and to go back to what you're saying like you've done so many incredible shows that have all been just like so funny so Jen did a solo show called wild man which was oh just it was just so good so it, it's it's hard to explain for people who don't know you but you are like you have so many facets of your personality that I think people wouldn't know unless they get to know you well and I think that show really exemplified that and like what you were saying about like given my background you wouldn't think 
that any of these things would be, which I feel like is is, is similar to me once again. What can I say? <laughs> um, <laughs> we're just uh, full of surprises. But I I think it's very inspiring to use uh, a really annoying word to see you step out of your comfort zone constantly and like always doing things like you said that scare you and just keep putting stuff out there because it's always makes the people who are like fans of you so excited because never know what to bloody expect it's always going to be good though that's so nice thank you so much (laughs) it makes me feel so warm and i would throw that right back at you as well because i feel like you know (sighs) you went and lived in la and like did all this stuff and like made your like you just like well like I'm chasing this dream and I'm doing it and I'm like Ugh, I'm too scared to go like live in LA but you went and bloody did it and that is also very inspiring I also would... I remember that night of, of wild man <laughs> because like I wasn't that night it was like a special bonus show like it wasn't even and you weren't even in the country like for the, the actual run but then you came for the bonus show because you were here and then afterwards you just like came up and held my face and you were just like crying like in tears and you were like Shaden and I was like oh like I didn't know you're like this is too much (laughs) so much but it was so nice because I was like I'm so glad I actually did the show again and so you could see it it's so good um and everything you you do everything you do with hit by a blimp shout out Caitlin shout out Tiana okay so The next question is, what's your favorite feeling? So it can be physical or emotional. I think my favorite feeling is like when you're in the middle of a good belly laugh, (laughs) right in the midst of it. And I like, it's, I, I think like when, I guess the image I have in my head is like when you're like sitting at a table in a bar and you've all got pints of beer and then some like joke or bit has happened that is like the funniest thing in the world and you just like go <gasps> and you in, you inhale because <laughs> you're like what's going to come out is a big old laugh and then you just like absolutely howl with laughter I think that's the nicest because you're like truly not <laughs> like you're not thinking about anything else <laughs> you were just purely in this moment of like <laughs> hilarious joy um so I think that is my favorite feeling magnifique that moment's always interesting as well because you're like part of why it feels so good and why you're present is because you're like oh this is in this is impacting me so much i have to focus on my breathing yes like, <laughs> absolutely so, it's sort of a meditative state yeah it kind of is and i get like you sort of get that feeling i guess similar like when you're doing improv i guess like if you're in the zone of like an improv show and you're like you're like solely focused on the one thing like there's just and it's you're not you're not trying like you're not trying to actively be present you just are present it's just happened um and then not just like being present but it's like also the joy of like having a big laugh is like the most joyful thing so it's like to be purely present in a moment of (laughs) bliss like that is like the best i love a belly laugh when you're not meant to be laughing like (laughs) absolutely (laughs) for one and i guess like trying to make a us like trying to make our careers out of like comedy and laughter I guess like that feeling is like what drives us you know yeah. it's like what like re- giving and receiving I guess yeah. it's um it is it is so nice and just to be able to like try to recreate that in every scenario is so good yeah for sure I think that I'm like I would like to be an easier laugh like I think to fiz- to have like a good laugh isn't the easiest thing for me I would do you think you're I feel like you you have like a vocal laugh pretty often I think so yeah I think I have a distinctive laugh I don't think it's I don't think it's a comically distinctive laugh no 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 (laughs) it's it's a very normal like enjoyable laugh it's not like you're like (laughs) 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 that's how I laugh normally um yeah no it is just a sudden I do like do a sudden (laughs) <laughs> like that kind of like a real loud sort of <laughs> kind of thing um so it would startle some people but would you say it's it, it's hard for you to to make you laugh or easy um it's pretty easy <laughs> i would say <laughs> pretty easy to make me laugh that's what we want that's a good thing though i'm envious i just kind of i feel like i often just go like <laughs> <laughs> and then every now and then i'll be like <laughs> but if i'm watching a bad performance I'm like, oh, like I make little like noises. 
I really need to stop. I mean, that hasn't been a problem this year. What live shows have I been seeing? My, my parents fighting over the remote. I'd buy a ticket. I'd buy a ticket. <laughs> you know cool. what? I'm sure it's the exact same as your parents. <laughs> they do everything at the exact same time. <laughs> If if you if they're to step in my house or uh, them to, or vice versa, the other couple disappears. Yeah, exactly. There can only be one. Okay. <laughs> the whole family line disappears, but also disappears from everyone's memories. <laughs> so it's like we were never here. Uh, the next question is, what's your happy place? I guess it's probably similar to a feeling, but I guess so. When I've like travelled overseas and stuff, there's been moments where I like find myself or I clock myself just like sort of in a very specific bizarre scenario and then that's when I feel like most at peace so like I don't know I remember one time when I was in like Canada and I was in like these hot springs overlooking like the Rocky Mountains and I was like just sitting like in like this water and it started snowing and I was just sort of like and it was just this like feeling of like pure sort of like solitude i guess um solitude and happy and there was like no rush no plans um just sort of like me being in this scenario with all these things happening and then that's just like this feel and i get that same i guess it's back to a feeling but i guess it's like more dependent on <laughs> more dependent on place and my environment it happens like here too like i went to i just went to like the beach last week and i just like floated in the water for a bit and i was like oh my God, like, it was so nice just to have, like, sun and all that. But there was nothing, like, for, like, it was not like I had anywhere to be. It was just like, oh, this is where I am right now. So I think it's like, I guess it is a feeling, but it's also subject to <laughs> the environment I'm in. So therefore, yeah. it's a good place. Oh, my, my happy place is, is literally just floating anywhere. So once again, we're the same. <laughs> we're the same oh yeah i gave you two water examples which <laughs> which was not my intention but maybe it is water <laughs> <laughs> okay so well you've got it right there then the little glass there it is yeah, hang on i'm gonna float in this water <laughs> all right the next question is ooh, what's your favorite song to cry to i think it would have to be landslide by fleetwood mac there is no other answer. <laughs> no, there's probably many. I have a playlist of like slow, sad songs just when you need it. But I think Landslide is like the, the epitome of it. And I think I listened to it like a little while ago um, and I was just like, oh my God, like the lyrics are becoming more and more relevant. <laughs> like it's like I'm getting it. <laughs> you understand it more. It's like, that. it's like, oh, it's always been this nice, beautiful song, but now it's like, oh my God, now I actually, <laughs> I can hear like the intention behind it as I'm getting older too and you're just like oh god it just gives me like shivers and just like the little guitar riff oh. yeah it's perfect I, I always think like I wonder wow if I if I make it to like 80 well, let's hope, I wonder what all these like the meanings I'll take away from all these songs are compared to now because like even noticing songs that I used to listen to like 10 years ago versus now obviously being 15 versus 25 is very different but like just thinking of like how how things have changed in my mind in that way I'm like wow what's gonna happen in like 60 years well I hear every song and be like yeah I get it yeah I get it <laughs> I understand it. <laughs> but like so like I get everything that I'm just like next <laughs> give me something I've never felt before uh, <laughs> it is it is kind of interesting like I feel like I've only started noticing that more in the last couple of years I guess yeah especially like artists that I know and love and then you sort of re-listen and you're like oh hang on like this is or like this is at a certain point it's interesting that growing up of stuff as well I think one of your guests was talking about Taylor Swift and talking about like folklore and being so like oh this is her now like and she's <laughs> she's like our age <laughs> <laughs> this is my age. but um it is just like oh yeah it's you know she was and then like all her fans are of course my age now so it's all like this specific so it's like you can kind of feel that you know that growing up I guess going through which is like really interesting which I think is also foreshadowing for what I'm going to talk about later <laughs> also before you said there can only be one also foreshadowing <laughs> Us touching our foreheads, also forehead shadowing. Oh my god! Ah. All right. So the next question is, who's someone you admire? 
I think right now, um, from a purely like uh, career and creativity standpoint, um, I really admire Dan Levy of Shit's Creek fame. He really have you seen Shit's Creek? Have you watched it? Oh yeah, I, it's yeah. watching it through this lock through like the second lockdown was the best thing I've ever done. It was just I was t- trying to take it so slowly because I didn't want it to end. And it's just so good. Even I've just been watching like film theory videos about it weekly. Oh, really? To like, yeah, I watched this video. I'll send you a link and I'll put it in the link of this episode as well. Explaining the the character dynamics, how like every single character has a foil. Clearly there is like, a cl- especially with like Johnny and Roland. But the way that they go into it, I was just like, oh, this is feeding my little TV nerd soul. I've not seen that, but that's so exciting because I've always, like, the show is very, like, I think it's, like, so much smarter and, like, than it is given credit for. Well, I mean, obviously it won a lot of Emmys, but I feel like it's very popular. But um, it is, like, it's, yeah, there's something about, so, yeah, to actually read some analysis of it would be really great. Dan Levy is great. And to just create, like, such positive, to put, like, such positive, queer relationships on TV is just like incredible and done it in such a way that you're still like, I don't know, you're still honoring like the, you know, the struggles of it, but also putting it in this like very positive light. It's so sweet. And just to see that arc of um, David and Patrick is just so gorgeous. Um, yeah. <laughs> and when he, when he sings like simply the best and you're just like, Oh my God. <laughs> like, I was like simultaneous, like, Oh my God. And like, please stop. <laughs> Because I watched, a, I think I watched an interview or like listened to a podcast where he was saying that that was so hard for him to do. He was like, all I could feel was how cringeworthy I was being. The dancing one, not 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 Patrick playing the guitar when he. Yeah, I think just the way that episode runs when Patrick sings it on the guitar, it's just so like it's setting up for like this is going to end like so awfully, like it's going to be so embarrassing. But then it's actually like the nicest thing in the world, and you're like. Ooh, subvert my expectations so yeah so I just really like and I like that his career has like he started as like a like a VJ like as a, I think he was a presenter on like MTV or something yeah and then, <laughs> which is like so fun like I love that as a journey um and then just created this like little show that like is clearly had so little money in this current TV climate of like everything's a million dollars an episode and so glossy and nice and he's just made this like little family sitcom um and it's with just like some of the funniest people and the funniest characters and yeah. it's so and it's like speaks to like my parents told me to watch that show and I was like shut up mom and dad <laughs> like I won't watch your stupid shows and then like I started watching it I was like okay <laughs> this is the best <laughs> done um so it like spans like generations too like I think it's it's so like when shows appeal to just so many different kinds of people so many different ages and stuff I think it's like you've done something like so extraordinary and then they just like clean sweep the Emmys they just like one like the no show has ever like won all like four acting <laughs> Emmys yeah, in there. and they just did it. this little show filmed in I know rightfully so I started watching it with my same thing I was like everyone keeps talking about the show like let's put it on and started watching it with my mum and she got mad at me when I kept watching it without her and was like (laughs) I wanted to watch more (laughs) another yeah actually I was listening I was listening to a podcast today where they were mentioning it was it's got nothing to do with the show but they mentioned that in the show even like spoilers for anyone well not really because you've already said Patrick and David are together but like when Patrick's coming out to his parents, like they made a distinct decision to make the um, reaction just be them being positive because like that is reality for a lot of people. And like all you see on TV is parents reacting negatively. And it's like, well, how are kids who like will probably have a fine experience coming out to their parents gonna even have that as an idea in their head if they've only seen it be negative on tv exactly um it's 100 percent. and i know there's always like i feel like you read a lot of criticism now where like people are sick of like sort of coming out narratives on tv or they're like i'm sick of people having to come out of the closet why can't they just be who they are which i like I fully, which I I get because I'm like, oh yeah, we are in a different space, but I'm still like, there's like, we still need those stories. There's still so many people like struggling to come to terms with that. So to be able to put that in shows, but it actually be positive. I'm like, it's so important. They do it really well in um, Never Have I Ever as well. Um, if you've Mindy Kaling show. Yes, um, loved it. The, that 
I can't remember the character's name, but they do that so like love. It's so nice and lovely with that character, and it's so good. Mindy Kaling's another one I would probably admire as well, just for like that career trajectory oh, of just yeah. like she's like it's like she's on the same path as me, except I haven't left the <laughs> fringe show stage yet. And I'm like, yeah, I guess we're we're on par. <laughs> I would compare you to for sure. <laughs> also, if there's anyone out there, the, I feel like the people that say. Um, things like that it shouldn't be a need to come out or whatever. I feel like those people, A, probably don't ever have to, so they don't really have the right to speak on it, and B, should read the article that you wrote a few a few years ago on this very topic, which I will also link for everyone. Shout out to my past work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like, it's also, and then I guess a, a third thing is, like, it's probably people from a place of privilege as well who have like been able to probably come out and live their lives with no fear of sort of persecution and they're like well why do we need this and you're like well there's actually people who have different circumstances and different things that they need to see those stories to sort of get that boost to do it all right so the next question is what's some weird kid stuff you used to do apart from of course having your own uh starting a spy organization yes <laughs> I was a very particular child. I guess I am still particular. Like I like things in a certain order, clean, <laughs> clean and organized. I mean, so I think that like started. And I also had like a lot of, I feel like I had schedules like <laughs> after school. So I would come home from school and I would have like the same snack. It was probably like a cheese and bacon roll. Um, yeah. And I would eat that and I would watch the big Arvo on television at 4 p.m. Um, Classic. Which was an iconic show which I don't remember what happened it was just four presenters in a bus I don't know actually what I think about it but I would watch that and I would like oh my god it's my favorite show and then I would read I would read every day um from like 4 30 till 5 like I had no little like weird schedules I'd read a book um and do that till then and then at five o'clock I would like do like whatever I don't know homework or whatever I needed to do for school and then at 6 p.m I would like had a shower and then at 6.30 we would like eat dinner. So it was like very on a schedule like all the time. So I think like I, and then yeah, just doing that. And then I, I think I just had a lot of systems and order for like everything when I was younger, which is carry over today. That's like a little grown up thing, like a little, a little, a little grown up in a little boy body. It, 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 yes. I think that's all I was, I think. I think I was just like a little grown man <laughs> so cute oh, it is important to be comfortable in your environment you know oh, and it's like sure. what makes me comfortable is that and I even go down like I went I got some new <laughs> visual episode got some new pillowcases Ooh. and I went through a hole for my bed and I ordered some and then I like didn't like them so then I went and got different ones and I went like just to like change the color palette in my room <laughs> and, I was, like, and I was like no one does this no, you should. That's a that's a really good thing to do. Our friend Taylor, if she's out there, shout out Taylor, is like the queen of aesthetic. I feel like every time she posts, like, and she's she's like very good about getting new bedspreads. Um, yeah. Every time she does that, I'm like, I think I should do that. It's so important to me, and it's nice to just have everything in a a certain way and a certain design that's just like very comforting. In terms of the the schedule, do you think that that's helped you? be disciplined in how you do things now because I'd imagine it would be like I think that that's one of the things about me like I thrive when I have a schedule um and since not you know having to have one with like school or uni I think that that's been made certain things harder for me do you think that that's now you've said that I reckon absolutely 100% I guess it's good in some ways but then a hindrance in others because then I feel like the hindrance being like sometimes I get too like focused on it or I get too particular about things and then I might paralyze myself and not do it but for the most part I think it has helped in that regard of just like uh this all this helps me to, to work helps me to focus I have always feel better when I am doing more things or like when I'm on a schedule on a routine and I'm thriving which is why being in the creative arts is like sometimes a real challenge because for me because you're like oh my god I'm working different jobs on different days things change all the time they're changing constantly um and it is like harder to get a sort of grounding on that um but the times where I have felt really focused and productive is when I was on a schedule like I was you know I had a job that was like very certain days of the week and I did certain stuff so I could like sort of build around that the last question Jaden do you think aliens are real 
Yes. Hundred <laughs> percent. They've got to be. They've got to be. They've got to be somewhere out there. Yep. <laughs> There's no, no other thoughts. They just have to be. The universe is so big. It. Uh, <laughs> there is so many things out there. I think to not believe in them is like, is like crazy. To think we're the only people in the universe is like, not is nuts. It's what yeah. you do. Yeah, it's the movie Spy Kids. It's absolutely wacky. <laughs> it has so many plot holes. It's <laughs> so many plot holes. If you, a hundred percent, and I hope they're just like <laughs> the ones in Arrival <laughs> with Amy Adams, <laughs> and they're just like actually just want to communicate with us, but we have to learn a whole new language. What if they were real and they were the thumbs from? <laughs> oh no! Kill them! Spy kill them immediately! <laughs> or they were floops fluglies. Ah! Foodlies, foodlies? Oh, they're actually quite peaceful, the food glees, weren't they? In the end, yes, they were they, like. They were just businessmen who had been like deformed and put on a children's television show. And everything that they were saying, they were screaming, Floop is a madman, help us save us. And he thought, you know what? Rather than trying to like tell them, don't say that, I'm just going to take everything that they're saying and make it backwards. Yeah, <laughs> it was huge. Absolutely. So that's fine. So if they crash landed on Earth, like we'd know how to deal with them. <laughs> like it would be fine, and we'd help them out. It'd be it'd be okay. So I'm I'm okay with Fooglies. The yeah, thumbs though, that would freak me out. Although the thumbs are pretty dumb, if I remember correctly. Yes. They should just run into walls and shit. Yeah. If there are any scientists out there or any aliens out there, hello, we come in peace. Um, and also, I think if they're like I said, scientists. The first step, if we do encounter any aliens, should be to just decipher whatever they're saying backwards. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll probably just... figure it out that way. All right, so that's that's all the questions. So now, Jaden, it is time for you to take the stage and tell everyone what we'll be discussing today for your topic. Didn't pick it up from all the clues we've <laughs> so ingeniously <laughs> uh, breadcrumbed throughout this <laughs> episode. Um, I thought it would be interesting to talk about the one and only Harry Potter, um, which is now always got an asterisk next to it, which is like when you, when, so when you were like, oh, like when this pod, when you asked me to do this, it's like you have to think of something to talk about. Like the first thing I thought of was the Harry Potter franchise. But then the second thing I thought of was you can't talk about that anymore. It's bad. And then I just like went away from it. And then I'm like, no, like I, I think it's still fine to talk about. Yeah. It's just like, it's probably just like more, I don't know, a wild thing to talk about now. It's like, it's, it is kind of weird, but it's still, yeah, anyway. But I would, Harry Potter has been so like formative in my whole life. I think it, I remember reading the first book, uh, when I was in prep <laughs> so I was truly six years old and I read the first book um and which was nuts because it is like I mean it's a kid's book but it's still they're long pretty long they're long and it really it was truly so exciting and then I was the full-on Harry Potter kid that would like line up to get the books as they were released um first to like see it at the cinemas when the movies came out um and it was just like I was absolutely obsessed I went to as Harry Potter to like book deck book week that's what it was it would dress up I would watch all the movies all the time um I knew every like spell <laughs> like did everything was like full on Harry Potter um and I think it's like so like it like grew up with me with us were you a Harry you're a Harry Potter child controversial I mean the whole topic's controversial now but um, I didn't read the books initially my sister read them to me in bed like I was a sick child oh, <laughs> I wasn't no. she just no. she loved reading and wanted to she like she was like, you're my little baby. I want to read to you. It's very cute. I'm not sure. I can't remember what age I was, but she read, I think the first two to me. And then by that point, all the movies started coming out and I was, I was balls deep in my America and Nationally books and my lemony snickets. I had, I had, I had a lot going on at the time. So I was like, you know what? This is one of the first things where there's a movie I can watch instead. I'm going to be a basic bitch and I'm just going to watch the movies. But then when I was probably like eight, I re I reread the first and second ones. And then I don't know why I never read beyond that, which I really should have, because that's the point where I feel like they 
there's so much more detail compared to the movies. I don't know. I love the movies. I love especially um, the second and third movies are my favorite for sure. Yeah. And I love I love it. Yeah. It's, it's, the Chamber of Secrets is my is is my favorite. It's a comedy. It's so funny. It's so funny. Um, and I feel like I love the third one because they travel back in time. Oh, absolutely. A classic it's, trope. It's a classic trope, but they do it very well. Because that's a hard thing to pull off, but they do it super well. Incredibly. And the third one is like when it becomes way more dark. It's the first, like you get Alfonso directing. So it becomes like very visually like different, um, becomes a whole mood, like a more cinema in itself. And then it's just like, and then the kids are getting a bit older. It's the first one that's rated M. And so it's like, ooh, now we're like getting a bit darker. And there's no Voldemort in this third one. <laughs> like it's all like, it's like, there's no mention. It's just like this story of like his parents and his godfather and all that, which is so nuts. Um, and so, yeah, so absolutely. I'd love, yeah, I've always loved Chamber of Secrets. I think just like the mystery of that one is so interesting. And the fact that everyone gets like frozen and petrified and stuff is like, it's like yeah. crazy. The stakes are um, so high. And then, yeah, and then the, the last one, the number eight is just like, like fantastic. It's so good. It's the only like, because they split the book and they were like, it's in two parts and everyone, it's like, it is a bit of a cash grab to make it two, but it's also like, I'm glad they did it because the last movie is so like, it's so just like a cinematic event and it feels so complete. Whereas if they tried to like shove it into one big movie along with part one, I think it would have been... Um, a real rush job. Yeah, they wouldn't have been able to fit in like a lot of important parts of the story. Absolutely. And part one is just like a wild like road movie. Like it's this weird, <laughs> it's this weird thing that isn't supposed to be a complete story. So it, it kind of isn't. So you just like, but then it's like, it's so different to the rest. So you're like, this is kind of, this is cool as well. Um, so you get to have a, a bit of fun with that. Um, yeah. So yes. So anyway. Big... <laughs> part one is the where they're looking for all the Horcruxes, right? Yes. Okay, that's, cool. that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopping around and there's some yeah there's like a lot of because they're not at Hogwarts anymore they're just like they're in a lot of like the landscapes or in a lot of like Welsh landscapes I think so it's all like very like weird and dramatic and cloudy and you're like Ooh. it's very dreary um, I remember being like this seems like kind of depressing but of course like, like the last few movies and books are depressing <laughs> Yeah, they've, they've got to be. Darkest point of the night. No yeah. Way. Yeah, Harry Potter's always been there. And I think it's absolutely, like, grown up with us through our ages. So it's, like, just, like, the ages of the characters has always, like, been around. Like, books, when the books came out and when the movies came out, they're always around me. So then, like, the last one would have come out when I was probably right at this. Now, what year was that? 2011. So, yeah, I was pure, I was 18. I was, like, at the exact perfect age yeah I was the same as Harry at the time so it was like this thing that had traveled through my youth and like and the books do that as well they go like start very kitty and young and then they become more adult and grown up as they go through so to have that it's like I knew I, you realize I knew at the time that I was like there's nothing else quite like this there would be nothing else that kind of follows you along this journey um as much as this has so I think that's always been this very formative sort of part of me and I'm sure it's what introduced like it's what made me be a big reader and it made me want to be a writer and it made me want to create worlds and stories and films and stuff like that because it was just so incredible and I guess we'll get to JK Rowling in a second but I guess what she created like the world she created in that is like so in in insane like it's so incredible like the detail of the world and how it exists in its own way and I think that was so so exciting to immerse yourself it was truly like one day I will get my letter and I will go to Hogwarts it will be me <laughs> but it's so real like you joke about it but like at the time you're like oh my god please <laughs> like I want to be a wizard like please to be a kid and have that feeling again of being like this thing has to be real like please let this thing be real because everything everything that's that sucks when you're a kid would be worth it if you were like I, I got my letter everything's gonna be fine my life will change yeah. when I'm 11 years old. <laughs> then it didn't. <laughs> yeah, of course not. I feel like also every kid that was into Harry Potter at one point tried to speak to a snake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You're like, maybe I've got the gift. <laughs> Anytime I like, would see like a door that looked like it had a really 
confusing lock, like even just a padlock. When you see a padlock to a kid, like what kid is going around like interacting with padlocks? I'd be like, (laughs) and see if something would happen. Play it backwards. What does it say? What does it say? It says, Floop is a madman. Help us. Save us. Oh my God. Nagini's just floop. Ah. Should we, should we just get right into the, to, to JK Rowling? Let's, you know, let's, let's do that. Let's do it. Not that I'm like the right person to speak on behalf of it, but I, I guess like it's, it is so sad that it has to like, that it's now forever associated with like her transphobia it's just like oh my god of all like of all the things like of all the things that could have happened it's just like it's so it's so disappointing i'm i'm very aware that like i'm in a, a bubble like i'm in a very you know progressive but like all my friends and stuff are in the same you know well they're all in the same progressive bubble and we are all sort of sharing and reading the same things we all have the same outlook so it's like we i read these things on twitter and you get angry and you read about it but then like i don't know i'll mention it to like my parents and they have no idea <laughs> like they would have no idea that jk rowling has tweeted like these things or like what even they mean to a certain extent i guess so you just like and obviously harry potter is not going to like go away like you can't, like it's yeah. gonna be there for a long time they're not gonna like bulldoze the theme parks exactly no, no way like it's not gonna happen so it's just like bad and i also know too much about this like why like you always wish you're like i was just ignorant in a lot of ways so you wouldn't have to expose yourself to this yeah it's just so hard so i guess we have to like try to you know like not give like more money to her but at the same time it's like me not buying a a a book of hers is like you know what's that in the scheme of things (laughs) like it's just like it feels like a drop in the ocean so it is just such a hard thing and then it the whole separating out from the artist is such a like a such a like a hot debate I guess um and it's like what (laughs) <laughs> like how can you do it I guess especially the movies like I find the movies are like don't have her involvement in it they're like they're based on her books but there's like hundreds and hundreds of people that are like have made these movies with love and care and have been in them in so many different ways um that it's like I'd hate to just eliminate that part of it as well because you're like all these actors have like worked so hard the directors have created these things the set designers have like created this world that's so um in let's so you know it's legendary I guess so it's like to just like remove all that feels like you're erasing like all these other people's work as well so it's just like such a hard thing to navigate I suppose yeah a thousand percent it's so discouraging obviously when anyone who uh you look up to who has created something that like means something to you shows their true colors as like a bigot not what we want in any uh in any circumstance but there's something about the fact that like it's so annoying to be like there's nothing i can do that's going to take away the hundreds of millions of dollars she already has as well absolutely (laughs) i'm not saying that people that have done these horrible things should be like stripped of their belongings and money and i don't i'm not gonna say what should or shouldn't happen to anyone i don't have any authority on any of this but like i think there's just something that's more frustrating about it being like she's sitting there in her little mansion tweeting her things like doesn't even see how we'll we'll probably never have to see physically how the things she has said has affected someone yeah and it seems like she's not gonna learn or she's not gonna change her mind so it's just like like what can you do it's like she's had her chances I guess there's always been little uh allusions to that before the big essay and stuff um but it feels like that's sort of it like you're not going to change her mind on it so what do, like what do we all do yeah. <laughs> from here which is really hard the other weird thing I, I feel because I like work as an usher for the, for the listeners I work as an usher at the, the theatres in Melbourne so I worked at the Princess Theatre for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So I've seen I've seen, seen Cursed Child so many times, hundreds of times, maybe not hundreds, but a lot. Um, but now it's like, well, that's going to come back in a few months. That's going to um, return to the stage. You know, they've sold heaps of tickets. All those actors in that show are doing it. And then I'm also like, I'm working 
for them. <laughs> so it's like, I'm, I mean, I'm not getting paid by JK Rowling directly, but it's like the money that's coming in for that show, which some of it would be going to her is like also indirectly paying me as well. So you're like, so what, like, <laughs> where do I draw the line on that as a job? Do I like, can I, do I not associate myself with it because of that? Or is it like, okay, cause I'm making money from a different, like it's coming from the theatre, not the production itself. Like what, where do you draw the line? Do I, I don't know, but then you'll, you'll go there. There'll be no mention of it. Every person that comes to the door probably wouldn't even know like about her transphobic yeah. tweets. So you're just sort of like, oh my God, it's just yeah. like. Or if they do know that they're, they're choosing to be like, well, I've bought this ticket or like what we're saying of like, how can you separate the two things? Exactly. The other funny thing they did at the theatre, it's like, so it was always just like the sign was always just Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, whatever. And then for some reason, about five or six months ago, I think Warner Brothers must have gotten involved. So all the logos changed. So now it said, so it went back to the original like Harry Potter font with the lightning bolt, that gold font. And it had in big letters, JK Rowling's Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, even though she's one of three writers of the play, but it's JK Rowling's Harry Potter. Yes, well. So they changed all the signs, they changed everything, all the merchandise, all of that. And then like literally a couple of months later, all of like this, well, maybe not a couple of months, about a year later, what is time? Like all of this happened. And I'm like, I bet you regret oh <laughs> putting a name god. on everything now. It's just like, oh God. Let's get out of that downer. We've, we've talked about it. If we didn't say something that people thought we should have said, we are sorry. And we don't know, we don't have all the information and, and you know, we're doing our best. We do not. So feel free if anyone's listening to give us their thoughts or send any articles or things that people have read that. Yeah, definitely. I'm always interested to like read that kind of stuff because I'm obviously not the person to speak on behalf of it. Yes, me neither. On behalf of all of that. But it's hard, it's hard to know like what to do <laughs> actively. You just know this information and then be like okay now what like what <laughs> like what's the what's the thing to do it's very very tricky do you want should we should we guess what each other's houses are or should we give hints thoughts <laughs> well i think you're a ravenclaw okay i think <laughs> i think you're a ravenclaw or a gryffindor but probably a ravenclaw are we both correct yes <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why did well, we even do that? that? Well, how would we have given clues about that? We just we, we already knew. Like we already knew. We're also you've got a lovely navy blue wall. I'm wearing a navy blue shirt. It is. <laughs> also, we are the same person. So exactly. I don't know we're... As soon as I said that, I was like, we're definitely going to be the same. <laughs> like. <laughs> Even if I didn't factor my personality into it, just knowing you, I would have guessed Ravenclaw anyway. Yeah, so. and I would say the same for you. I think a lot of, I feel like a lot of the uh, create, creative people generally fall into Ravenclaw because they, it's more intelligent, <laughs> intelligent now. Intelligent and creative. And like a bit left of centre, I would say. Like, yeah. You know, We're not like other girls. Not like, <laughs> not like other girls. We're cool girls. We are. We're skater girls. We are Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne is the Ravenclaw of musicians. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And there are only four musicians in the world. <laughs> Avril oh, Lavigne is. Okay, let's, let's do this. Okay, so if Avril Lavigne is Ravenclaw, who's Griff, uh, someone like kind of basic, but, but very good, you know? I think Taylor Swift would be a Hufflepuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was waiting for you to get to <laughs> Hufflepuff because I was like, I will say Taylor Swift. <laughs> of course. Okay, we're going with like pop stars of our of our time. So we've got Avril Lavigne, Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff is... Old mate T-Swift. Old mate T-Swift. I don't think this is it, but Gryffindor, Hannah Montana, Slytherin, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> it's an even split. Whoa, that's huge. I would, I would put... I would put both of them as Gryffindor, Hannah Montana yeah. and Miley Cyrus. And I would put Rihanna as Slytherin. <laughs> Good girl gone bad. <laughs> Disturbia. Absolutely. Dist <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's just get Hannah Montana out of the mix because she is, sorry if this is me breaking the news to you, but not real. We've got Miley Cyrus, Gryffindor, Taylor Swift, Hufflepuff, Avril Lavigne, Ravenclaw, Rihanna, Slytherin. And now Love I'm that. like... 
Miley Cyrus's new album, pretty Slytherin. <laughs> exactly, pretty that's what Slytherin. I was going off. Now, now, you, now, now you said that. I'm like, because in my head, I was just thinking Miley at the time of Hannah Montana, but now I'm like, <laughs> get Miley back in, back into Slytherin right now. Plastic Hearts is pure Slytherin. <laughs> yeah. Another question: Who's your favorite character in the entire franchise? Is that too big a question? Uh, no, I think I would say. Um, I mean, I mean, obvious one is Hermione because she's an icon. Mm-hmm. Sec- least, second, well, least obvious would be Professor Remus Lupin. Mm. Go on. He's just a man who like suffered, you know. He was, <laughs> he was a werewolf. He suffered, and he was so like brave and so supportive of Harry. Um, in like, it was all about Sirius Black, but it was Professor Lupin also had the same like care for him when he didn't have to and I think that was really beautiful and his like relationship with Tonks as well was very sweet and very lovely so he was yeah absolutely my favorite character in the universe and then Hermione is just like like just made like you know is she's just so cool in her own way and just made intelligence cool and made um made you feel okay to be like a bit of a book nerd or whatever you needed to be um and also to state how you feel (laughs) all the time she would (laughs) have no she did not hold back in what she was feeling ever which i think is so important too um and emma watson's portrayal of her was just like it's iconic it is iconic want to see i want to see more weird roles from emma watson i loved her in the bling ring yeah (laughs) so good she's great in little women as well oh she was fine in little women i don't know i don't think her character had much to do <laughs> yeah. um little women is a great movie you didn't ask but just so everyone's aware my favorite character is neville <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry for being so <laughs> I know that the whole point is podcast is to have the guests talk, but I just wanted to insert myself in here and say I love an underdog. We love growth. We love um, someone who's not afraid to show their feelings also. He was just like a scared little boy. He was a scared little boy, but then he bloody saves the day at the end. He's had yeah. such a journey. I do love Neville. What a sweetheart. And it's like got ripped also. He is so handsome. He's beautiful. <laughs> He's so handsome. All right, so do you have any final Harry Potter thoughts or statements? <laughs> Harry Potter statements on behalf of um, the Harry Potter fan community. It's been so, it's such a like important thing <laughs> to me. And it's so sad that it's now tarnished forever in that way. But we've got to learn from all of this kind of stuff. And we got to like, you know, this might open a, open a conversation in for for things that we would never have talked about otherwise. So pros and cons all the time. Yes, definitely. I have loved this chat. Um, oh my God, it's so fun. As always, just love you, adore you. Very grateful to be a friend. You um, too. Oh, look, look, look at those cracks. What? I really cracked it right as you were saying something so nice to me. And I was like, <laughs> I was like whatever. Look how flexible my fingies are. Um, oh, yeah. FF, flexible fingies. <laughs> how can everyone out there uh, find everything that you're up to? Oh, my God. Um, well, you can follow me at J um, if you can spell that. <laughs> Hopefully it's written down somewhere. Yes. You can find me on Twitter and the gram. Um, and you can follow my sketch group hit by a blimp as well. We do random stuff every now and then. So find us, follow us. And that's, that's it. That's how you can get in touch with me. Beautiful. And watch the investigators on Netflix. It's so good. It's so funny. So sweet. Very proud. My mum made her whole class watch it. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's so and, nice. And I made my whole family watch it, obviously. It's so adorable. It's so lovely um such a good way to spend 15 minutes <laughs> doing these episodes it's so nice everyone please go check all that stuff out and if you want to find everything that i'm doing you can just uh check out the old instagram from me at ashley crap app and uh find all my links to everything that i'm doing there 
new episodes of This Bad Boy every Wednesday. And then also I'm streaming on Twitch every Monday night and Thursday afternoon, Melbourne time. So you can find all that stuff there. Thank you all for being here. Whether you're watching or listening, I appreciate you. If you want to give a like, a subscribe, a rating, a review, whatever you have available to you, go ahead. And if you don't want to, I'm so sorry. Tell me what I've done wrong. I'll try to make it up to you. Unless you're a big old doo-doo head. In which case I say, get out of here. And that is how we're ending this episode. <laughs> Jaden, thank you so much. Love you very much. Very grateful for you. Very All grateful right. for you too. Stay hydrated, everyone. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.